Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. There. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School at SWRNC, which stands for Southwest Rod and Custom, Dallas, Texas, home of, once again, Do It Yourself Automobile School. Now, what we're doing today is, uh, if you look behind me, we got the 1966 truck that we're getting ready to put epoxy primer on and paint black. Now, the problem you have is there's a lot of people out there that think powder coating is the way to go. That I need to powder coat my frame. I need to powder coat the bottom of my car. No, you don't. Okay? Uh, a good, strong acrylic enamel paint okay, uh, will do the same exact thing and be one-eighth the cost of powder coating. Okay? To powder coat that, we would have to take it all apart in a million pieces and then put it all back together. Okay, you don't need to do all that. All right, you don't need to do it. You shouldn't do it. It's a waste of fucking, excuse my language, time and money. This is a 1966 truck. This truck will not be driven on a daily basis. Okay, this truck is a restoration job. Basically, something like you might be doing out there, restoring a car and driving it on weekends. Okay, don't waste your money powder coating because that's exactly what it is, wasting your money. The wheels. That's a different story. We'll get those powder coated. That's something that will get chips on it. That's something that you can see visually. The frame, you can't see. Do you see what I'm saying? Once it's all together, you can't see all that. Okay? Painting that frame that we have sandblasted, okay, I forgot to mention that. Okay, it will outlast my lifetime and your lifetime. This was a 1966 truck. And the frame is still there. The frame is still intact and it's very good solid steel to this day. So moving right along, what we're looking at here, we're looking at our 66 truck. All this has been sandblasted. We've uh, went over that before. If uh, anybody out there watches SWRNC, YouTube channel SWRNC, they would have seen the video where we took it to the sandblasters and got it back and had it uh, detailed, minutely sandblasted inside and out, underneath, okay. Uh, I've already went ahead and epoxy primed the firewall, it's done, okay. But we gotta do all the frame and all the structure. Now when doing a job like this, it's very important, okay, to either do this in a closed environment, such as a paint booth, or somewhere where overspray will not uh, hurt the requirements to paint this, okay, is not with the HVLP gun, all right? HVLP guns are out at this time. You want to use a siphon gun or preferably if you have access to or even own one, a pressure pot sprayer. I have pressure pot sprayers. I have two of them, okay? I am not using those today though. What we are going to use is a Binks number seven siphon gun right there. Now, as for material that we're going to use, okay, for this job, we are going to use, if you look right here, epoxy primer to seal the bare metal in. Okay, that's very, very important. Okay, this is called green gray. I should have got black. I don't have black. So, I'm also going to use my hardener, which I call hardener. It's actually activator. This activates the uh, epoxy primer. It's a two-part epoxy primer. So with those two mixed together, it becomes a bonding, okay, uh, excellent adhesive, excellent holdout type sealer, okay. That will seal our metal so no rust or moisture will get in to our truck to rust it out even more, that it's not going to be rusted. We're also going to add a little bit of slow urethane reducer. Now the reason I'm going to add some of that to my epoxy primer, I'm going to add 10%. 
is because it's very, very hot out today. Okay, it's approximately 98 degrees right now with a very high humidity count. So it feels like about 110. Thank God the wind's blowing. And if I don't add any reducer and I just mix these two together, it's going to dry faster than I want it to. And it'll be very chalky and dry and will actually ruin our paint job. So adding reducer to your primer will actually let the primer flow out better and dry evenly. So that's what we're going to use for our primer. As for our paint, we are going to use enamel. Okay, this is acrylic enamel, raven black. All right, this is a very good, high quality industrial paint. This is not to be used, okay, to paint your car with. All right, the price on this is $28 a gallon. Okay, it's very, very economical and it is used in all sorts of manufacturing warehouses across the United States and maybe overseas. Okay. This is what I use. It's a high industrial, high grade industrial uh, black, raven black. They also sell white and they also sell uh, caution yellow if that's what you want. Okay. But this is a very, very good paint to use. We're going to use medium reducer today because I'm going to be spraying it on very thick. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my air pressure on my spray gun. I'm going to have the pattern instead of being real wide, it's going to be real skinny. Okay, so we're going to be shooting that paint out very, very quick. So instead of using slow reducer, which is for hot temperatures, I'm going to use medium reducer, which is for a medium cool temperature. And that's since it's going to go on very, very thick. When you're spraying acrylic enamel, okay, it's very, very important to always add your acrylic enamel hardener. Now you don't need the top name brand, okay, because uh, hardener is hardener, believe it or not. You don't need to buy, uh, here's two different brands right here, okay. You don't need to buy the expensive brand name, uh, just use hardener, okay. It usually takes uh, one quart of hardener to one gallon of paint. And then it's, since this is black, uh, black is usually, uh, has a thinner uh, content than any other color. So we're going to mix that uh, three to one, and then of course we're going to add our hardener before, and then we'll mix three to one on the paint. Because we want the paint to go on thick, we don't want it to go on watery. We're going to put on three full wet coats of paint, and we're going to go ahead and put two full wet coats of primer. to the part that is the most important part of all and that is safety. When you are painting this type of paint you are going to be basically on the ground. Okay, Paint falls on the ground. You see what I'm saying? Gravity force pulls it down. You are going to be painting with the spray gun or the pressure pot sprayer or whatever right in your face. It's very important to protect yourself from these toxic fumes Okay, and chemicals. And what you're going to do is you are going to go purchase yourself an economical spray suit. I personally would not recommend to paint a vehicle such as this on a day like this due to the heat. Uh, this does not breathe very well, so it's going to get very, very hot as I'm doing this, and I'm going to do it very, very quick. We will not be able to film me painting this today due to the fact that... Uh, the overspray is so thick when you're painting something like this that it would be a waste of time. We will look at the product when it's done, okay, and uh, see what it's all about. That's basically what you need and how to do your frame at home, okay, after it's sandblasted. It's very important once the frame is sandblasted, do not touch it and go ahead and paint it as soon as possible. Okay, moisture will make the frame or anything that has been sandblasted rust very quickly. Okay, sandblasting is not, okay, soda blasting. Soda blasting and media blasting is totally different. Sandblasting, I've said this a hundred times, I'm going to tell you again, removes the factory sealer, okay, the, the etching they put on at the factory removes that and basically turns it into bare raw steel, okay. It's very important to refinish your frame or any parts that you've had sandblasted to at least put them in epoxy primer immediately right after it's done. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I hope this has helped you out. Uh, 
I'm sorry that we can't watch it being painted. I got a fly on my back. Okay, uh, but you know, I'm sorry. I got to get to work, and it's going to be a. Hard Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.